Today was the ninth game of the World Chess Championship. Of course, the challenger, Magnus Carlsen from Norway, is leading with two victories. There are just four games to go. Anand, the world champion, had to go for it today. This is his big chance. He had the white pieces, so let's see what he did. Well, d4, for the first time in the match, he's played d4. Now he had a whole day to prepare something special. And, well... Let's see what happened. It's a Nimzo Indian. Now, I'm actually very surprised that Carlsen with black played this. I was expecting something very, very solid, like a Slav. But, well, I find it uh, great, but pretty incredible that he's kind of up for a fight. You know, there's no real reason for him to play something so double-edged. But, well, let's see what happened. Anand played this very, very ambitious variation. So white is basically aiming to get a really big centre here. And Carlsen continued playing very quickly. He played his pawn to d5 to stop that pawn advancing. Now, Anand has played all this before. Here, in the World Championship match, Anand against Kramnik, Bonn 2008, Kramnik recaptured with the knight, and they had a very, very tense struggle. Today, Carlsen recaptured with the pawn. Did that very quickly, so this is all preparation. Anand played here. So, well, here the normal move for black is just to castle on the king side. But here, Carlsen played a really ambitious move. So Carlsen is fighting fire with fire. Now, why is this so ambitious? Why is it so double-edged? Well, the thing is, when you advance this pawn, of course, black is starting to use his pawn majority on this side of the board. It also prevents white's bishop going to this very active square. So it gains space. However, it takes pressure off white's pawn here, making it easier for white to advance in the centre. So very double-edged indeed. Anand continued to develop his pieces. And now a really aggressive move from Anand. So he starts this pawn storm on the king side, going for black's king. Carlson seemed to know what he was doing at this stage. He was still playing fairly quickly. Anand developed. Of course, he has to bring his own king to safety. And now Carlson started this nice manoeuvre with the knight. So the knight has come in. This is the other point of playing the pawn here to support this knight. So it means that Carlsen can always knock out this potentially dangerous bishop. And now he started to advance this pawn majority. So he's looking to gain counterplay on this side of the board by advancing. Otherwise, Anand's pawn storm on the king side will be simply too dangerous. Let's just go on a few moves. So Anand beginning this really dangerous pawn advance. Uh, after the game, Carlsen admitted that he was actually rather scared, but, well, he just had to keep making his moves and hoping for the best. Now we come to the first big moment in the game where Carlsen has to make a big decision. So, as I said, Anand just wants to advance these pawns, this pawn storm on the king side, and then his queen can follow up, the rook will follow up, looking really dangerous. So Carson has to decide, does he try and blockade these pawns, or does he play on the other side of the board? Well, let's see what happens if, for example, he tries to blockade with this move. I actually don't like this, because white takes, supports this pawn here, and you can see this bishop points at this weak pawn here, the rook can come across, the knight stands well, I still think that white has a very, very good position here. So the pawns have been prevented from advancing to a certain extent, but I think black still has difficulties. Carlsen said after the game that he considered playing this move in order to blockade with the knight on this square, but he rejected it because he didn't like white counter-attacking here. So white has stopped Black's pawn advancing, white has pressure here, and it might even be possible at a later stage to advance, maybe even to sacrifice there. So white doing all right there. So instead, Carson played seemingly a 
very risky move indeed. He brought his knight here. So this is bringing the knight away from the protection of the king. And, and continued this very simple, straightforward idea of advancing on the king's side. Carlson trying to find counterplay on this side of the board. Well, this is all fine so far. Now, the problem with this is that after this exchange, Anand exchanged the rooks, and this drags the knight away, miles away from the protection of the king. And at this point, Arnesi feared for Magnus's position, because it's so easy for white to attack here. And Oh, Magnus played this very uncompromising move. Now, if this were an end game, if you took the queens off the board, then this protected pass pawn, you can see this wonderful pawn chain, this protected pass pawn here would be very dangerous indeed. But first of all, Carlson has to survive the middle game attack. So Anand moving into the attack, Carlson had to bring his knight back. And this is already reaching critical proportions. For Carlson. He blocks the king side. Anand switched over, so Anand threatening to play the queen in to deliver checkmate on this square. It's such a simple idea. Carlson, well, if he plays the king into the corner, for example, and defends the mate with this move, so the rook defends the mate, then the rook swings up, and very simple idea of bringing the rook here. You can sometimes even where well, you're threatening to sacrifice the queen and deliver checkmate. Very dangerous. But Magnus played the knight back. So the knight protects this square. So the Anand's queen came in. So not possible to play the queen in at the moment. But white has this plan of shifting the rook here and then delivering checkmate on this square. So Carlson needed something pretty big in order to stop this threat. He tried this pawn move. So this seems to pin white back. Now, if Anand falls back on the defensive, say, with this move, then black's counterattack comes. Simple threat to take the pawn. And if the rook takes the pawn, then queen check. Queen check here, and on the next turn you take the rook. So Anand realised he had to keep attacking. He played an extraordinary move here. He played the rook up the board. So continuing his basic caveman attack on Black's king, but allowing Magnus to make a new queen. So now Magnus has two queens on the board. And here, probably the best move for White is to play this. Now, it looks like there's no decent defence to this rook attack. In fact, there is. Both players had seen this variation. The queen comes here. The queen shifts back. So you give up this new queen. But after this exchange, the bishop comes in, protects this pawn. Black is still a piece up here. Now, both players calculated a very long variation here, excuse me, they calculated this move and they both thought that probably black, after giving up this piece, giving the piece back, black should be a bit better here because actually white's king is more exposed than black's, but they both thought that white should be all right in this position. But Anand was looking for something stronger. Instead of playing the bishop back, he played his knight back. But he'd completely forgotten something. He'd completely forgotten that after this move, the queen covers this square. And if the rook comes over, black can simply take that off. So there's no more danger to black's king. Black has an extra rook in this position. And after, say, queen here, black's counterattack starts. And black, with his extra rook, will win the game. So after moving the queen here, after Carson played here, Anand actually resigned the game. So, quite an extraordinary game. So far in this match, we've seen 
Magnus Carlsen's wonderful endgame technique. That's how he's won his two games. Today we saw what incredible self-confidence he has in taking on Anand in this really sharp opening. So he's fighting fire with fire, took incredible confidence. But also we saw what incredible calculating skills that Carlsen had. Of course, he had to see these this incredible defence with the Queen way back. He had to calculate that, you know, maybe 10 moves ago. Um, and he calculated with accuracy. So, with three games to play, Magnus Carlsen just needs one draw from those last three games in order to become world champion. They play the 10th game tomorrow. Will it be the last game? We'll see. Till then.